From Mountain Lakes Brewing Company in Spokane, Washington, this is Wheat Wheat Don't Tell Me, the Mountain Lakes Brewing Company beer quiz, with your host, Chris Sindrick. Hey, all right. Hey, we have a great show for you tonight. Uh, Spokane singer-songwriter Chris Molitor will be here later in the show to play Not My Beer. Woo! Woo! If you'd like to be a contestant on the show, it's very easy. Just stop by Mountain Lakes Brewing on the first Wednesday of the month prior to the show, and we will make your dreams come true. Woo! Yes. It's time to welcome our first contestant of the night. Hello, you're on Weed Weed Don't Tell Me. Tell us your name and a little bit about yourself. Hello, my name is Allison. What do you want to know? Um, I'm five foot ten. I'm in Aries. <laughs> I like long walks anywhere, largely around Audubon Park. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Woo! And that's. So, so Allison, what do you do for a living? What is uh, what is your main uh, you know income? Well, unfortunately, Chris, I work two doors down from you at Eastern Washington University. Oh, that's right. In Cheney, Washington. You were my setup guest for the night, just in case nobody showed. Yes. That's right. I yeah, forgot yeah, yeah. about that. I'm the plant. Holy cow. Well, welcome to the show, Allison. We'll edit out that uh, part. Okay, yeah. thank you. Let, let me introduce you first off to our panel. So if you don't know, we have uh, a, a, a panel of brewers from the Inland Northwest Craft Brewers Association. First we have, our panelist comes from, um, all the way from Spokane, Washington. He's co-owner of both Link Malt in the Valley and the Grain Shed Brewery in the South Perry District. He is a Ferris High School grad who loved the name so much, he legally changed his own. Please welcome Joel Williamson. <laughs> Originally hailing all the way uh, out east in the Otis Orchards, our second panelist has literally pastored a flock of beer lovers through the doors of his amazing brewery and tap room on North Monroe. From Bellwether Brewing Company, where Mountain Lakes cleans their kegs, please welcome <laughs> Dave Musser. <laughs> And finally, our third panelist is originally from Portland, Oregon, and was lucky enough to marry a Spokane native and end up in a much cooler city. After four years of brewing in his garage along with Tim Hilton, he opened this tap room in the heart of downtown Spokane from Mountain Lakes Brewing Company. Please welcome Dave Basaraba. <laughs> Well, again, welcome, Allison. You're going to be playing Whose Beer This Time? I'm going to read three quotations from recent beer news. If you can correctly identify just two of them, you will win our prize. Free beer and a pint glass. Not bad, right? Yeah, there you go. Are you ready to play? Yep. Okay, here we go. All right. Here is your first quote. Quote number one. Beer before liquor, never sicker. Liquor before beer, you're in the clear. So goes the old saying alleging that one can avoid a hangover if they consume their alcoholic drinks in the correct order. According to a new medical study, what can now be said about this famous quote? I have no idea. Um, it's a lie. It's a lie! That's actually true. It does not matter. Just keep consuming. All right, the order. That's, that's what we just keep cons consuming. Right. That has not been my experience. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the order in which you choose to drink different types of alcohol has no bearing on the intensity of the next day's hangover. Using the acute hangover scale, the study took into factors including thirst, fatigue, headache, nausea, stomach ache, increased heart rate, and loss of appetite. I just want to say, Chris, I went to college for 11 years, and this was not my experience across that She's whole... A it's a study. 1.1 decade. Right. Wow. This is science. All right, here is your second quote, quote two. Winter is here. The wall has fallen, and the final battle for Westeros is, that right? Westeros is underway. This was a quote from Doug Campbell, who is president of Brewery Omegang, um, on his announcement of their newest beer honoring which popular television series? 
That would be Game of Thrones. That is the Game of Thrones, yes. For the Throne was released in time for the April 14th airing of the season eight, the strong golden ale, which is co-fermented with Pinot Grigio and fancy grape juices, is just as interesting as the final season itself. Is it though? Not. 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 No. Has We've anybody been serving something that? like that for like three years. Yeah. <laughs> Game of Thrones no Brewing. One liked it. Game of Thrones Brewing Company up on North Monroe. That's right. The, the bellwether knockoff, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they copied us. That's right. Why? Doug Campbell doesn't know what Druid is. Yeah, exactly. No. Yeah. They are not familiar. <laughs> Quote number three When there are nine. Samuel Adams has named a new Belgian Brute IPA in honor of which popular Supreme Court justice who is responsible for the quote, when there are nine? Supreme that, Court justice. Is that R- RBG? That is RBG. Ruth Bader Ginsburg, as part of the can- company's annual contribution to the Pink Boots Society, a nonprofit for women in the brewing industry, Samuel Adams released the collab. When there are nine, the brewery is named after Ginsburg's uh, iconic response to the question When will there be enough women in the Supreme Court? When there are nine, she responded. Here, here. You won. Let's find out how Allison did with the quiz. Dave? Dave? She won. Dave. She won! She won! <laughs> Dave! <laughs> Any day. Congratulations, Allison. You have won our prize, free beer and a pint glass. Thanks for playing Whose Beer This Time. Well, I think it was originally free beer in a pint glass, but now that you've said it, you've set a precedent, so I guess we'll give her the glass, free too. Yay! <laughs> So now we have a panel question. So panel, if you need to pay attention. Sorry, sorry. We're here. Panelists, now a question about some recent beer news for you. The question is, a popular English brand brown ale will now be produced by Lagunitas in the good old USA. What is the name of that popular English brown ale? Newcastle? It is Newcastle. Yes, that's correct. That's the only brown ale he knew about. That's a point for Joel. There you go. Joel has a point. You are currently in the lead. Newcastle brown ale. The Amsterdam-based Heineken first bought a stake in Lagunitas in 2015 before snapping up the remainder of the company in 2017. So Lagunitas is a crafty beer company now. Um, Heineken, crafty. Crafty. How is that legal that they can use a term so close to craft? I don't know. And their beer be so far? I don't know. So far. Heineken bought the Newcastle Brown in 2008 deal, and since 2017, the British beer that is, is actually been brewed in Holland before now making its way to the Lagunitas breweries in Pentaluma, California, and Chicago, Illinois. What's that? Illinois. Illinois. What did wow. I say? Allen. What? Wow. No, I was. That wraps up the first part of our show. We'll take a break now, and we'll be back with our game, Bluff the Drinker. Cheers. to the Mountain Lakes Brewing Company Brew House stage in downtown Spokane. We're playing Wheat Wheat Don't Tell Me, the monthly beer trivia quiz with your host, Chris Sindrick. All right. All right. We're playing tonight with our awesome panelists. Just a reminder, we have Dave Basaraba, Dave Musser, and Joel Williamson here tonight. Right now, it's time for the Wheat Wheat Don't Tell Me game called Bluff the Drinker. If you would like to be a future contestant on We We Don't Tell Me, remember, just stop by Mountain Lakes Brewing prior to each show, and we'll make your beer head swell. <laughs> Hello, you are on We We Don't Tell Me. Tell us your name and something about yourself. Uh, I'm Paul, and I'm a mechanical engineer, and I've been home brewing for the last three years. Oh, yeah, home brewer. <laughs> three years <laughs> home brewing. And what's your, do you make anything amazing, or... Uh, I make all kinds of styles, IPAs, uh, stouts. Uh, right now, I have a Weizenbach fermenting. Ah, nice Weizenbach. Would you guys do a Weizenbach? Yeah. 
Double doppel dunkel We did a doppel dunkel yeah, That's right, once. I remember that. It was banana good. nut. No bananas, no nuts. No, but ba- yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was inspired. <laughs> well, yeah. welcome, Paul. Uh, you are here to play our game where you must tell truth from fiction. Your topic, as always, on this show is beer. Specifically, this week, your topic will focus on beer pairings. As if you don't know, today is International Cheese Day, but it has which no pairs very well with beer. However, so do current trends in exercise. So your topic tonight is current trends in pairing beer with exercise. Our panelists are each going to tell you about a beer story related to beer pairings, current trends in pairing beer with exercise. Pick the one who's telling the truth, and you'll win our prize Free beer and a pine glass. Are you ready to play, Paul? Yep. You were supposed to wheeze the juice. Are you ready to play? Yes. All right, first off, we're going to hear from Joel Williamson. All right, here we go. We're all angry about something, and we've all been hanging on to an F-bomb for a little too long, says Ashley Duzic. Rage yoga instructor at Brash Brewing Company in Houston, Texas. Much like the traditional form of the discipline, rage yoga combines breathing, stretching, and holding different postures. But the angry spin-off cranks up the attitude, encouraging participants to scream it all out and let go of their inner rage in between ice-cold beer breaks. What this does is allow you to have a safe space to let all of your anger, frustration, and rage out in a healthy way, Duzic says. Rage yoga probably isn't for everybody, she says. Nor does she recommend bringing your kids to the expletive-rich classes. But that's not to say there aren't light-hearted moments. One of the funniest things I think I've ever heard was, I told you to do the dishes, she says. Duzic, based in Houston, is one of three certified instructors currently leading rage yoga classes. The others are in Calgary and Edmonton, Canada. At Brash Brewing Company, the alternative yoga form appears to have found its spiritual home. Not only does the Houston brewer boast a cocksure name, its previous beer releases releases include labels such as Dead Horse Scottish Hell, a Scotch Ale, Hammer Smashed Face, a Russian imperial stout, and vulgar display of power, also a Russian imperial stout. (laughs) Rage Yoga's stated aims to become zen as fuck by giving zero fucks. Sounds like future collabs waiting to happen. All right, Rage Yoga from panelist one, Joe Williamson, is your first choice. Now we are going to hear from panelist two, Dave Musser. The modern pogo stick has been around since the early 1900s and has risen and fallen over the years. However, a new rave of pogo sticking has hit the Netherlands, sending people through the roof with excitement. Vonnie Vanderberg, owner of Amsterdamit Pub in, nope, not there, (laughs) Volderdam, Netherlands, has been credited with a local craze of drinking pints of beer while actively pogo-sticking. He became so good at it, at the practice, that he would often entertain revelers of his pub by pouring full pints of Amstel Gold and then pogo-sticking from the floor to the bar top while not spilling a drip. Now, Amsterdam at Pub... Patrons can earn a year's worth of free beer if they can replicate the feat. The competition has sent the town and most of the Netherlands in a frenzy of practice. Pogo sticking fly pogo sticks fly off the shelves of local sporting goods stores. Online orders have risen 350%. I love pogo sticking. <laughs> I'm going to try this. <laughs> Amstel Brewing has even gotten into the game by sponsoring the event, now titled Amstel Standing. Amstel and Standing. <laughs> Amstel Standing. 
still standing. Donating, donating the year's worth of beer to any patron with the skills to master the task. To date, nobody in town has been able to earn the title of Amstel Standing. But 